We are now joined by UFC lightweight Luis Pena. Luis, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Our first question is with Danny Segura. Danny, your line has been unmuted. Hey, Luis, how's it going? Um, you just mentioned it right there. It's it's kind of weird. So, uh, what's this whole process been like uh, during COVID times? And um, are you? I guess it, it seems that you're not enjoying it as much as a normal fight week. I guess. No, not at all. I am not enjoying any of the COVID-19 protocols they're putting us through at all, man. Like the, One of the things I love about fighting for the UFC is how easy and uh, streamlined they've made fight week in the whole process. But unfortunately, you know, everything's out of their hands. You can't blame them for what's going on. Yeah, for sure. And this is uh, about that uh, on paper looks looks pretty exciting. Um, can you kind of size up and, and, and tell me uh, sort of your thoughts on your opponent, uh, Kama Worthy? I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for Kama. You know, he's uh, he's got power in his hands. He's a very good technical striker. He's going to be, um, you know, hard to to put away. He's he's a tough guy. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I believe in my skills, but at this like I, I think that just makes for a great matchup. I think um, many people have asked me, and I've, I've gone back to the Andre Feely, Charles Jourdain fight from a couple weeks ago. I, I really believe we can put on a, a very similar performance. Yeah, and uh, he, he hasn't fought in, in, in quite a bit while you're someone that's always been uh, relatively active. Um, what do you make of his inactivity period, and do you think that will play a factor at all here? I mean, that's probably just uh, things that happen, you know, whether it be on the UFC's end or his end. Um, I know he's had a few matchups that have fallen uh, by the wayside since uh, his debut. So, I mean, you can't really put anything on him when it comes to inactivity. I mean, I don't take anything away from him. I still expect, you know, the same comma worry that came out there and knocked out Devontae Smith. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a win here, what do you think will put you in the division? I mean, you'd be basically, uh, I believe you'd be, what, four and one in your last five performances? Uh, what, what do you think does, uh, what, do you, what do you think a win does to your career? I, I definitely think a win puts me um, in a position where I, I at least start, like, I'm, I start fighting, like, top 25 guys, or, or like, I'm on the main card, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys that people are talking about working their way up in the the lightweight rankings yeah and uh th you know throughout your career you've always sort of uh preached and talk about equality and, and love um so i kind of just wanted to get your thoughts on what's going on in the country right now and, and everything that's uh sort of came up uh you know with police brutality and racism and, and uh, all these other issues that have come up I mean, I, I think I, I hold a very interesting perspective being a half black man with an extremely Spanish sounding name born in Europe. Um, I, I see a lot of different uh, uh, cultures. I've been around a lot of different cultures. I was raised by a, a white woman and a Puerto Rican man and a white man, you know, so I, I've seen a lot. It's, it's very interesting from my perspective because I have family in just about every uh, sect of culture you could imagine that that's here in America, besides maybe Asian. And um, it's it's really hard for me because I see some sides of my family that just don't understand and don't get um, the way other sides feel. And yet they can look at me and not see me as a black man. They just see me as their family member. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just complicated. It's a complicated uh, situation we're in. I mean, once again, I'm an MMA fighter, and I do not believe my opinion on any of this really truly matters, though. Yeah, um, but but like you said, you've always been someone that that sort of uh, sort of preached again equality and love. Um, does your message during these times become stronger? Do you just keep that up? Um, how, how do you proceed on that end? Without a doubt. I mean, um, this is one of the few times I really do wish I was able to bring the uh, the world flag out with me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we still haven't been able to figure that out. Um, but that that is something that really does uh, it resonates with me. You know, I, I really do wish I could bring that flag out and preach that message. It doesn't mean I can't. You know, I don't need the flag to do it. But at the same time, my message is still the same. Man. We, we need to come together as a as a human race.
Yeah, for sure. And is that due to, uh, I guess, Reebok uh, policies or, or why can't you bring out the flag? I have no idea, to be quite honest. Okay. They really right. haven't given me a lot of details on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not really too worried about it. Yeah. All right. Well, looking forward to your five men and uh, best of luck. No problem. Thank you. Next question is from Jay Anderson with Kate Cypress. Hey, uh, Lewis, welcome back. First of all, uh, obviously, kind of weird circumstances coming into this fight with the pandemic. It's affected a lot of people's training. So I'm just wondering what your training camp has looked uh, like during these times. Um, my training camp was phenomenal. We really didn't shut down operations too much at American Top Team. And um, luck, like, fortunately, I, I was actually right before the whole quarantine and everything really got going. Uh, my girlfriend and I went to New Jersey to uh, kind of go through some medical issues she was having. And um, so I, I actually ended up quarantined six weeks up in New Jersey. So I took a quite, a quite a bit of time off after my last fight. But, but that was something I really wanted to do because this is my seventh fight in the two years that I've been in the UFC. And I don't, I don't think you really see a lot of people doing that. So I just want to take a little bit of time off. But then once I was ready to go, once my manager started telling me, you know, that late June, early July might be the, uh, the time period, I was immediately back down in Florida training. And we really did. I didn't have any, like, there was no problem with me having a, a full, like intense camp. Like my main sparring partners were Jorge Masvidal and Dustin Poirier. Now, you'd come out the other day and said, I'm going to be come out in the middle. We just spoke to him, or I just spoke to him uh, not too long ago, and he, he shook his head. He's like, no, he's not going to do that. He, he trains at ATT. He's too smart for that. Now, I'm not going to ask you to give away any game plan, but when you hear him come back and say he won't do it, is it a motivating factor to maybe go and stand with him? See, my actual game plan is to um, locate that thermal exhaust port and detonate that, take him out, First round, you know, once I once we do that, it's all exhaust port and boom. Sorry, dear. We had a little technical issue, but let's get back to Jay Anderson. That's all good. All right, you you able to hear me still? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Yeah, I love the Star Wars reference. Absolutely. I want to get uh, a take on something else from you. You retweeted a comment saying that Robert Drysdale did everything right last weekend. I'm just wondering if you could give your thoughts on that situation and uh, as well, have you ever had a moment uh, in terms of needing your coach to motivate you to get back out there between rounds or anything like that? Um, well, the, the, the reason I retweeted that and the reason I, I, I support Robert Drysdale and his decision and uh, the way he handled that whole situation was because if I was in that situation ever, I would want my coach to, to try and motivate me to get back out there. However, that's never been something I've needed. I've never needed to uh, my, my coaches to motivate me to go get back out there. It's never been a thought to me in between rounds not to go back out there and fight as hard as I, as I can. Fair enough. And last one for me, then. You've been having some fun. I think a lot of people have with the whole Askren family uh, thing. Has there been any talk between you guys and maybe when the pandemic's over and social distancing and all that, getting together for like a group photo or something? Uh, that would be pretty dope. I mean, uh, Chase Hooper and I have talked about training together. I want to get him out to uh, Florida, so hopefully we can work on his striking. But other than that, nothing like too formal. But that would be pretty interesting, or at least like maybe at a UFC event we're all at. That would be that'd be nice. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, best of luck this week, and looking forward to it, man. Thank you guys so much. Next question is from Carlos Contreras from Milano. Hey, Luis, can you hear me there? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I, I, you was just mentioned about that you wanted to fight someone in the top 
25. You have any names? Because besides of that loss uh, with Matt Trevola, that was a split decision. You've been in a, in a really good run right now. Um, I, I can't really think of any names per se off the top of my head, but there have been quite a few lightweight fights, but in the, the, in the past uh, these past events, um, and pretty much anyone that's, that's, that's gotten a win here recently, um, I wouldn't honestly any of the guys that won last weekend. Bobby Green, um, what's his? There was another one. There was three lightweight fights last weekend. I watched really, really close. Oh, Jim Miller, Bobby Green, and then um, I can't remember the other one. But either you know, either of those guys, you know, I wouldn't mind. Really, anybody in the division, anyone the UFC puts up against, puts puts in front of me, I don't care. I just fight. Is the last weight, lightweight one of the toughest decisions to to climb to to I mean be, being so ch such a, uh, a roster that we with so many fighters in the lightweight division? I do believe so. I believe the lightweight division is really really tough to climb because as much as you can be winning and 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 doing everything right, if you're not putting on exciting performances and you're not someone that the fans want to see, you're simply not going to rise in those rankings because this this Uh, division is probably one of, if not the most deepest division in not just the UFC, but all of MMA. And with so many, so many amazing talents in this division, everyone's vying for a spot. So you can't just be a winner. You have to be a little bit more. Thank you, Luis. No problem. Our last question is from Augusto Herman ESA from Somos MMA. Hi, Luis. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine. Thank you. And talking now, now about uh, of the fight, what do you need uh, to be careful of with, with Kamawardi? I, I really just, I need to be, uh, I just need to be on point. You know, he's really good. He's, he's a good striker. We're, we're both very good technical strikers and he's got power in his hands. He showed it. So I just need to be aware of everything he's presenting me and uh be aware and, and have my defenses you know ready at all times i usually do I'm, i'm i keep my hands up my head's always moving i'm i'm very uh confident that you know as much as he thinks i'm gonna go in there and, and make this uh a, you know grappling fest i'm very confident in my ability on the feet uh, how, how do you feel about performing in in an empty arena i fought on the ultimate fighter so it really doesn't mean a thing to me Okay. Okay. And and what about the the smaller cage? W which one do you prefer? Once again, in the Ultimate Fighter, we fought in the 25 foot cage, and I fought in a 20 foot cage for Shamrock FC before. I fought in a box in a boxing ring that was less than that was like smaller than the room I'm in right now. Fighting in a small cage is actually a pretty. I, I think it it bodes well for me because not. Only can you not run away from me when I'm I'm putting hands on you. You can't run away when I start when I want to grapple you. So I I really do uh, I like the, the the thought of fighting in the 25 cage, uh, 25 foot cage. Okay, thank you very much and best of luck in, on Saturday. No problem. Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Luis. Thank you.